Welcome to Destroy All Podcasts, I'm Jeremy, and today I'm talking about the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles exhibit at the Cartoon Art Museum in San Francisco. This is the little flyer from it. Now, I went on the opening day, um, they had like a reception, which was, um, well, the 14th of June, 7 to 9 p.m. in San Francisco, and it was pretty cool. Not only did they have um, a couple of artists who worked on the original Mirage comics back in the 80s and early 90s. They also had uh, several artists from the current uh, TV show, the CG show from Nickelodeon. And um, in addition to that, they had <laughs> guys dressed up as life-size Ninja Turtles in like full outfits that were styled after the Nickelodeon show. And, you know, people were taking pictures and stuff. And um, they had a bunch of little... Um, exhibits around the art museum probably my favorite was they had the original art for the entire first issue of the comic back from 1984 the original art not reproductions of it but the actual art that they used to create the comic in the first place and it was up on the walls and that was just beautiful i've always really loved the art they have this um nice thick inking style uh, with the the uh, screen tone added in it's just just gorgeous, really awesome seeing it up close in person. Uh, also, um, the two artists that uh, from the original Mirage comic that were there was Mark Baudet, uh, and he he was um, a guy who didn't do that many issues of the old comic, but he did do this issue, which is number um, 32, yeah, 32. Uh, and uh, let me take another look at it. He told me when I spoke to him that uh, this one here, this woman, was actually based on his wife. And I'll, I'll put a, a nice screenshot in there so you can see it up close, or a nice scan of the, the comic book as well. And um, in addition to Mark Baudet, uh, there was Ken Mitchrooney. And while he was a Mirage artist, he mostly worked on the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Adventures um, comic from uh, Archie, which, while it was uh, based on the original cartoon at the very beginning, it, it veered off in its own direction really quickly, and it was not adapting the TV show for very long. The interesting thing about it, too, is that uh, while it was published by Archie, it was produced in-house by Mirage, and Mirage artists were on it. So like I said, Ken Matroni and uh, the other primary uh, artist early uh, on was um, the, uh, uh, I'm sorry, basically his name, uh, Jim Lawson. Yeah, Jim Lawson, who went on to do a bunch of other uh, Mirage books. He did do Return to New York, uh, and he did do um, the uh, a large portion of uh, both Volume 2 of Mirage and uh, almost the entirety of the art for the super epic, totally great City at War storyline from the uh, end of Volume 1 of Mirage. Uh, I think the first issue was done by Eastman and Laird by themselves, but uh, the rest of it was mostly Jim Lawson uh, in terms of art. But uh, Ken Mitch Roney, um, he also was the original character designer for Tiny Toons Adventures and is working on a bunch of um, modern stuff right now. He's still working in animation to this day. And um, Mark Baudet is uh, a, an artist who does uh, like graffiti, like street art stuff now. He um, has a bunch of uh, exhibitions and galleries going. He lives in the Bay Area now. And uh, if you're in San Francisco right now, he did like a huge mural that is up uh, on the, the back side of the Warfield, the uh, concert venue. So... Um, and he also did, Mark Baudet did, um, and I'll put pictures of this up too in the video, he did a spray-painted rendition of uh, art from the very first issue of the Mirage Ninja Turtles comics in 84. So there's sort of the, the cover with the turtles on the skyline, and uh, also one of the shredder that was really, really good looking. The spray paint art is just beautiful. Really a big fan of that. Uh, I also had a kind of a moment with Ken Mitroni. Um, so this book here... Uh, this is the Tundra Publishing edition of um, the, it's not the first uh, issues of the um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Adventure series. It skips the part that's adaptation of the uh, TV show. And this is pretty much where it started veering off in its own direction. And for me, this was really, um, really important to my childhood because when I had some really bad stuff going on in my life, uh, this book, I got, I basically got, taken out of school, from out of middle school by the police and put on an airplane and sent back to Michigan. And believe me, it was not a fun experience, but I had this book here to keep me company and keep my spirits up. And I kind of took it with me when I flew for years after that. So to me, it meant a lot. And I got to 
tell uh, Ken Mitroni that story, and that was really cool. And um, he drew, I don't know how well you can see it here, you know, I'll put a, a screen uh, scan up there, but he drew a, uh, a little turtle figure there for me in addition to signing it. And uh, he said, thanks for bringing it out. And it was really fun talking to him, and he talked about how um, he wanted to work on more Ninja Turtles, and it was a really fun experience in his life. But he also uh, was grateful that people like me had uh, uh, enjoyed the work and, and took it with us into adulthood. And he was really glad that I, I brought the book to show him. And uh, I did think it was really fun to um, discussing um, what it was like working on Ninja Turtles back in that time. Because w while it was such a global phenomenon, to the people who were actually working at Mirage Studios, it was kind of difficult to gauge how big it was other than just seeing the huge amounts of merchandise coming out. It wasn't really till you know, a couple of years later that the hugeness really became apparent to everybody at Mirage because, I mean, they were still living in a, a relatively small uh, slice of the world, you know. So I, I really enjoyed that. Um, so Mark Baudet was cool too, but I had, I guess, less of a personal connection here. But he did draw um, a cool uh, Ninja Turtle on the, the back here. And I, I don't know how you can see that, but I'll uh, put a scan up as well. But... Mark Baudet, um, he kind of has the air of, of a guy who's um, been around and seen a lot and uh, is um, a veteran of the art world. I, I guess I would say Ken Mitroni seems more like a, like a cartoonist, like an animator to me. And Mark Baudet seems more like an artist artist. He has kind of that edge to him, that, like, um, that ability to seem cooler than everybody else in the room. Um, I did briefly talk with the animators for the uh, New Ninja Turtles show, but I haven't actually watched it, so I, I didn't have a lot of things to talk to with them about. Um, but they did have some material there from the original Ninja Turtles show, which was really cool. Uh, so they had um, original character models, and they had um, the original uh, a few of the original um, cells and uh, pencil drawings that the cells were based on, and they had a bunch of um, packaging art, like... Uh, original painted um, art that was used for the covers of the, the VHS videotape releases of the original TV show. They even had like a, a, um, a TV playing episodes of the original Ninja Turtles show, which was very nostalgic for me. But the great thing about it is there was kids there watching it, kids nowadays, like five, six years old. And it was really cool for me because there was basically three generations of Turtles fans at this event. So there's people like me who are, you know, in their mostly early 30s, or late 20s who grew up with the original comics and the original TV show. Um, now, I mean, there may be people who were like teenagers in, you know, 1984 when the comic first first came out. And, you know, maybe they would really be the first generation of Ninja Turtles fans, but they weren't really present. I feel like a lot of those guys that were into the original comic and the RPGs at the very, very beginning probably ducked out when it became a phenomenon with the kids. But I was one of those kids, so, I mean, I, I, there's certainly no sense of judgment going on there. But none of those people were present, really. It was all people around my age for, for that generation, for the, the people that grew up with the original cartoon and video games and the original comics and Archie and the, the live-action movies, because I have to say, still, the first Ninja Turtles live-action movie is one of the uh, seminal experiences of my childhood. Uh, that yeah, I guess I should say, of the things that were not all fucked up in my life, um, it was it was a very escapist moment for me, but my life was really, really bad in 1990, and that movie helped me get through a lot of stuff. So, you know, this to me was a big deal, um, getting to see people my age in their their early 30s and late 20s, and then there was another generation below us, which were mostly kids who are like in their late teens or early 20s now, like like college kids for the most part. Uh, these people actually grew up with the um, the four kids TV show and the CG movie from what was it? 2007. So they were like kind of the second generation of turtles fans. And now there's a third generation of turtles fans, which are the, the kids today who are watching the new CG show. And presumably will be going to the Michael Bay produced live action movie this summer. So yeah, I really enjoyed um, kind of having this generational experience there. And it's true that I guess it's not a, an actual generation generation. It's probably just two generations. There's the people my age and, and then their kids. And the people in the middle aren't really a generation because I, I think 20 years is a generation if we're being totally correct. But in terms of the, the generations of the show, I suppose, it was three big groups. So that was really fun for me. That was, that was a good experience. Um, 
Also, there was the author of the uh, Ninja Turtles Ultimate Visual History book, which looks really cool, but I didn't have money to buy it. And, and I mean, I'll get it eventually, but it was really neat looking. And uh, the author, whose name I'm spacing on, Andrew something, uh, also was a cool, personable guy that I didn't really have anything for him to sign because I didn't buy the book because I'm kind of broke right now. Um, and by the way, let me just mention, thank you very much to everybody who's contributed to the Indiegogo campaign. Uh, it is helping, I'm, you know, in a much better place than I was before. I think I'll be able to sell enough stuff to make up the difference, even if I don't get any more pledges at this point, because at the time of this recording, we're at, I think, $1,180. And thank you again so much. I really appreciate all your contributions. It's very, very helpful. And this whole insurance dental thing has been a, a real nightmare. And I'm, I'm glad that I'm kind of seeing the end of the tunnel. But uh, yeah, I think I'm going to be able to pay down my credit card before I have to pay a ridiculous amount of interest because it's like a 20% interest rate and uh, it's ugly. But thank you very much for all of that. Um, but back to what I was talking about, which is the Ninja Turtles exhibit at the Cartoon Art Museum. Um, the, uh, they also had a, uh, a bar there for the people of my age, the parents, I guess, for the most part. And uh, they had Ninja Turtles themed cocktails, which I thought was great. And I, I took a picture of that. I'll, I'll put it up there. Um, I, I do have to say, though, be gentle about the quality of my pictures here. They would not allow flash photography in the museum, I guess because there's some kind of concern that the flash might you know, damage the art or something like that. So I, I did crank up the, um, the ISO level, that, you know, opened up the aperture as much as I could to get as much light in as I could. But the pictures were still kind of grainy and there wasn't much I could do about it. And I did try to get video, but it just didn't come out really at all. So I'm just kind of going to put stills in here to illustrate what I'm talking about. But it was a really fun experience. I really enjoyed going to the Cartoon Art Museum. And if you're in San Francisco, um, you still have time. Let me pull up the flyer here. Um, Ninja Turtles exhibit is uh, May 3rd to September 14th. Um, yeah, so you can see there's the flyer here. Oops, there's the Ninja Turtles. Um, it is true that the uh, exhibit opened earlier, but this was like the official reception that I went to because mainly I wanted to meet Mark Bode and Ken Mitroni. So that was a cool experience. You can still go to the Cartoon Art Museum and still see the, uh, the Ninja Turtles original artwork from the first comic up there. You can still see the, uh, the cells and um, character designs and such from the original cartoon. Uh, there's a bunch of other stuff I didn't mention, like there's action figures, there's uh, original art from um, different comic issues, uh, there's uh, like merchandising stuff too, there's other uh, original art for, um, I think it was like the cookies, the Ninja Turtles cookie box from the, you know, early 90s or something like that. So there's a bunch of really neat stuff there, plus there's other cool comic book art from a different series, not just Ninja Turtles stuff going on outside of the Ninja Turtles exhibit, of course, but... There's a bunch of cool stuff. Um, right now they do have, um, you can see it on here, they've got um, Mike Zack, who's mostly famous for doing like crazy Punisher art. Um, and uh, it looks like uh, Trina Robbins. Uh, I'm not really familiar with her stuff either, but you know, there's, there's other stuff going on. But there's also um, just like permanent exhibit stuff that's been there forever. Well, I'm assuming it's permanent. Um, there's a lot of like weird golden age art hanging on the walls and stuff like that. Plus they have uh, an animation desk from um, back in the day used to animate old cartoons. And the, the gift shop is really good too. Uh, they have a bunch of um, kind of hard to find, but modern um, printings of uh, comic collections and stuff. And some of it is signed. Like they had um, the uh, Defenders, the new Defenders. I don't know if you're familiar with this Marvel comic. Uh, originally it was the Defenders and every issue, well, more or less, they would lose people or gain people. There was never an official team until the 80s when it became the new Defenders. And it was kind of like the X-X-Men because you had Iceman and Beast and Angel all from the X-Men that were all on the Defenders together along with some other people like the, uh, is it the Gargoyle? Yeah, the Gargoyle and Valkyrie and a couple of people like that. But it was mostly like people who used to be in the X-Men, but they have the... Um, Essential Defenders 5 or 6, whatever volume it is that has the, the new Defender stuff and it's like signed by the original artist and they have a bunch of stuff like that, a bunch of original artist signed things and it, if you're in San Francisco, uh, it's a good place to get all of the modern IDW printings of Ninja Turtles books, both the, the new Ninja Turtles book and the reprints of the old Mirage stuff. Uh, so yeah, a really great experience and the Cartoon Art Museum is really fun. 
and I, I know people who've worked there before and it's always a good time to check it out but i really liked the exhibit the ninja turtles exhibit and it was really great fun meeting ken matroni and um mark baudet so shouts out to both of them because they're great guys and i'm really glad that they were able to draw in my book a little bit and share my stories and you know shout out to to the uh, animators for the new cg ninja turtles i'm you know i'm sure your show is great i've ever heard everybody said it was great but i can tell you that the art that they were drawing was really cool but it was funny to me that the line was much longer for those guys than it was for the artists from the comic book but i guess it's probably because the kids are more familiar with the new show but i did really enjoy it and there was so many cool people there who were around my age that I could talk with and we all had the same kind of experiences growing up watching the Ninja Turtles cartoon and movie and reading the old comics and stuff. So um, it was just great. It was really fun. And while I've certainly met uh, comic artists that I really appreciated growing up before, uh, it was nice seeing it in this kind of um, setting where it wasn't just a comic convention where there's everybody and their brothers there. And it wasn't, especially San Diego Comic Con, which is such a nightmare. Uh, so many people everywhere. It's just like being attacked at a mall. But this was a much more intimate, familiar kind of space. And even though it was really crowded, it was fun. And they had like free pizza and, you know, Ninja Turtles themed cocktails and stuff. Like it was a great time. I really enjoyed it. I hope if you get a chance, uh, you can come out to San Francisco and see the Ninja Turtles exhibit before it closes. Um, but even if you don't, uh, you'll get to see some pictures of, of my experience there. So I uh, hope you like this little video. I know it's not super duper professional. I'm still kind of learning how to do lighting. And I know that we've had a lot of requests to do more videos. So I'm trying to do more videos, but it is a little bit time consuming and there's definitely a learning curve. But I hope I'll get better. And if anybody has any suggestions on tutorials on lighting, please let me know. Okay, uh, that's it. Uh, send us feedback. Feedback at destroyallpodcastdx.com or post your comments on www.destroyallpodcast.com or on collectiondx.com. And uh, once again, please contribute to the Indiegogo campaign. There's like a week left. And um, I mean, I'm really, really grateful to everybody who's contributed so far. But please continue to contribute. All right. Thank you. Bye, everybody.